Hello friends, in this video we will learn about cardiac axis determination in ECG. Many students find this topic very difficult. So I will try to simplify this topic as much as possible. For complete understanding, watch the full video. First of all, what does cardiac axis means? It is direction in which the heart depolarizes. Normal axis of the heart is from minus 30 degree to plus 90 degree. So this area is for normal axis which is depicted by pink color. Left axis is from minus 30 degree to minus 90 degree which is depicted in green color. And right axis is from plus 90 degree to plus 180 degree which is shown in blue color. There is one more axis beyond these two known as extreme axis which is from minus 90 to plus 180 degree. Before actually determining axis of an ECG, you need to know some basic concept regarding heart vectors and wave production. If the direction of depolarizing current or vector is in the same direction of lead, it will produce positive wave. If the direction is opposite, it will produce negative wave. And if the lead is perpendicular to depolarizing vector, it will produce equiphasic wave. How we can apply this concept practically? First consider this normal axis of heart, which is leftward and downward. So lead which is leftward and downward, that is lead 2, will show positive deflection in normal ECG. And leads which are perpendicular to this vector, which is AVL, will show equiphasic wave. And wave opposite to its direction, which is AVR, will show predominantly negative wave. After understanding this concept, let's move to actual method of determining cardiac axis. The first method is lengthy but accurate method to determine the axis of heart. It contains three steps. The first step is to find the equiphasic complex in the limb leads. Remember friends, for axis determination, we always see limb leads not the chest leads because chest leads are basically at horizontal plane. Second step is to find the lead perpendicular to equiphasic complex. And the third step is to find out direction of the perpendicular lead. It may look complicated but once we see the examples, it will be easy to understand. First example, look at this ECG. Applied the step 1, you can see clearly that the lead 2 has equiphasic complex. Now, Second step is to find the lead perpendicular to lead 2. So look at this image. Lead 2 is plus 60 degree and lead which is perpendicular to it is AVL which is at minus 30 degree. Now the third step. We have to see the direction of waves in this perpendicular lead. And we can clearly see that direction of wave is predominantly positive. And as we already discussed, if the direction is predominantly positive, the axis or depolarization vector is along the lead. So we can say axis for this ECG is along the AVL, which means there is left axis deviation. We will see another example for better understanding. Look at this ECG. Apply step 1. Equiphasic complexes are seen in lead AVR. Then step 2. Find lead which is perpendicular to AVR, which is lead 3. And last is step 3. See the direction of waves in this perpendicular lead. Here, direction is positive. So vector of depolarization is in the same direction of lead 3, which lies in the right axis. So in this ECG, there is right axis deviation. Let's see one more example to make you adaptive for all variations. Look at this ECG. Apply step 1. The equiphasic complexes are seen in AVL. And the perpendicular lead to AVL is lead 2, which is our second step. And last is step 3, that is to check the direction of complexes in lead 2 which are predominantly positive. So the axis is in same direction of lead 2, which lies in the normal axis. So in this ECG, there is no axis deviation. These are the list of leads which are perpendicular to each other. Lead 1 is perpendicular to lead AVL and vice versa. Similarly, lead 1 and lead AVF are perpendicular to each other. And lead 3 and AVR are perpendicular to each other. Now the second method which is more easy but less accurate than the first. This method is also known as rule of thumb method. You need to consider direction of waves in lead 1 and lead 3. Just remember the mnemonic, right reaches and left leaves. That is, if direction of waves in lead 1 are negative and in lead 3 are positive, they are reaching each other. And so from our mnemonic, there is right axis deviation. Similarly, if direction of waves in lead 1 are positive and in lead 2 are negative, they are leaving each other. So, this is left axis deviation. Remember friends, this method is easy and short but less accurate compared to first method. So friends, this was all about this video. 
If you like the video, do share it among your friends and also subscribe our channel so that you don't miss our future videos.